Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Dr. G. This is another special episode inspired by space exploration and animated films. Stay tuned. If you missed the last couple episodes of Learn with Dr. G, I introduced inspiration for what we're going to explore today, which is Netflix's original film, Over the Moon. Microsoft has partnered with Netflix to bring you unique content inspired by this film. And the themes and certain scenes from this film really started getting me thinking about the ties between data and code and space exploration. You can head over to aka.ms slash in culture slash over the moon and not only find our STEM lessons here, but also some inspirational words from some of the voice actors. Over the Moon is an adventure about a bright young girl named Feifei who builds a rocket ship to the moon to prove the existence of the moon goddess Chang'e. She's fueled by determination and a passion for science to accomplish the unimaginable. Gobi, what's your name? I'm Feifei. Did you catch that? Did you see the lunar rover that Gobi was riding when he came out of Feifei's ship wreckage? Okay, so a little bit of a backstory. About a decade ago, I got to work with NASA when I was an undergraduate student on a research project where we took images that were sent down from the Mars rover and we created a little game where young children could tag the images with what they saw in them. Now, NASA scientists at the time were looking to identify specific types types of things in these images. For example, did the image have a picture with the rover in it or a picture of the horizon or picture that you could see earth or the sun or a picture of certain types of rock. So we built a game where children could identify the objects that they saw in these images and then that would pre-categorize the images and then we would send those pre-categorized images to the NASA scientists who would then dive deeper and be able to actually state what you know, type of rock or size of rock or whatever it was. We had a lot of goals with this project. One was to simply inspire children to be excited about what was happening related to space exploration and, and even what happens once we come home, once we bring samples home or images home or things like that. Another goal was to reduce the amount of work that NASA scientists might have to do when they're trying to categorize, let's say, only rocks. Rather than looking at all of the images, they could look at only the images that contained rocks. So when I saw the lunar rover in the movie Over the Moon, I got really excited because I started thinking back to that research project. And I thought, well, guess what? Now we've got AI, we've got machine learning, we have tools that can do this type of crowdsourcing, but just all within a machine. So I started thinking, especially with the Artemis 2024 mission, where the next two people are going to step foot onto the moon, how might we be able to use AI and machine learning to impact the type of research done here on Earth from samples or images gathered on the moon? And that in and of itself is kind of exciting, but I wanted to spice this up a little bit. We know Feifei and Bungie are on the moon, so what if we used the lunar rover to be able to identify when it saw Bungie, for example? Maybe Bungie and Feifei get separated and Feifei just wants to either find Bungie or wants the lunar rover to kind of keep tabs on her to make sure she's safe. You could imagine incorporating some artificial intelligence into the lunar rover and instead of sending images down to NASA, anytime it took an image where Bungie was in it, it would just send it over to Feifei. And that's really what inspired this module. So in this module, we're gonna dive a little bit into artificial intelligence and specifically Azure Custom Vision, which is Azure's kind of in the box solution for incorporating artificial intelligence into apps that you might be building. Specifically, I wanna talk about the role that artificial intelligence can play when humans can't be there. We know that humans can't be there when we're on the moon, for example, but humans are also not always around when we leave our pets at home, for example. So in this module, I'm going to show you how to train and test a custom vision model to be able to identify Bungie when she's running around the moon. And by the end of this video, you'll know how to make your own custom vision model to identify your favorite pet or animal or what have you. If you wanna follow along, you can pause now and head over to aka.ms slash 
learn with Dr. G slash over the moon, and you'll find the learn module. And also don't forget that I do bi-weekly live streams as part of the Microsoft Reactors, which you can always find my upcoming live stream by going to aka.ms slash learn with Dr. G slash upcoming stream. And this will tell you when my next live stream is, allow you to sign up and get notified. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that I'm going to do is head over to the Azure portal. I already have an Azure subscription, but if you don't have one yet, there are two ways that you can get one. They're both outlined in the Microsoft Learn module, but you can get a free trial. And if you are a student, you can get another type of free trial that doesn't require a credit card. So I encourage you to go check those out. Once you have your Azure subscription, you'll be taken to this homepage where you can create a new resource. Today, we're going to create a new custom vision resource. I'm gonna click on create and I'm taken to this form that I can fill out. The first thing that I wanna do is make sure that I have the proper subscription. This is what's going to be billed for all of the resources that I use within Azure. I'm gonna create a new resource group because I don't have one yet. I like to always create a brand new resource group for anything that I'm doing that is especially something that I'm testing because at the end of my test, it's much easier to just delete the entire resource group to make sure I don't have anything accidentally left running so that I don't get charged. Next, I wanna create a name for this custom vision resource. I'm gonna name it Find Bungie. Now there are two things that we need to do here. One is we need to train our custom vision model. Training the model means that we're going to give it a bunch of images of Bungie and say, hey, artificial intelligence, this right here, this part of this image, that is Bungie. So when I give you new images you've never seen before, go ahead and look through those images to try to find this shape that's Bungie. The next thing that I wanna do is test or use my model to make predictions about where in an image Bungie might be. So there's two, two things that we need to do. We need to train our model and then we need to test or, or use our model to make predictions. And this is why when we're creating our custom vision service, Azure asks, asks us to specify what location or region we want our services to be running from for training and predicting. So imagine I was building this app over here in Washington state. I want the Azure resources that I'm using to be in a data center that's near to where I am so that it's a fast process. But imagine if I was deploying this app for my friend who lives in London, because I want them to be able to use this app predominantly in London. Then I want the prediction results to be using resources in an Azure data center that's closer to them. So in this case, I'm going to choose the same regions for both because I'm the only one who's going to be training and testing my model. But in future cases, if you're ever building something that you then want to be used in other places predominantly, you might consider changing up which regions you're using. So I'm going to click on West US 2 for my training location and the free tier and West US 2 for my prediction location and again, the free tier. I'll click review and create and create. And now we just wait a minute. As we're waiting, you can see that Azure will not only give us some notification up here in the top right, but we will also get deployment details here, which will show us all of the other types of resources that it's creating on our behalf, so that way we can use the custom vision resource. Once it's done, there's a few ways that we can get to it. Number one, we have this big button here that says go to resource. But let's say for some reason you created the resource and then you had to log out and log back in. If you head over back to your home page and you go into resource groups here, which if it isn't there, you could always type it in up here. You click on resource groups. It'll take you to all of your resource groups. In this case, I've got my over the moon one. And this will take me to where I have both of my resources. I'm gonna click on the find Bungie one. And that takes me exactly to where the original go to resource would have taken me. And if I go to resource from the one that was just created, it's the same place. This quick start guide is really useful and I highly recommend that you read through it. 
the biggest thing that you can take away from this video is that there are two ways that we can interact with this resource. One of them is a no-code solution that uses the custom vision.ai service within the browser. That's what we're going to do today. And then the other one is through API calls in the custom vision SDK. So if you wanted to integrate this into some code that you were writing, you could go ahead and look through these quick starts and this documentation to get more information on how to do that. But today, we're just going to head straight over to the Custom Vision Portal. The great thing about this Custom Vision Portal is it's connected to Azure. So all I have to do is sign in with the same Azure credentials that I use to create that Custom Vision resource over in the Azure Portal. Once I've done that, I'm taken to this home page where I can create a new project. Here, I will fill out this form. Again, I need a name. I'll call this Find Bungie again. Why not? And then you'll notice that my resource gets automatically filled in with the resource that we created over in Azure. It's the Find Bungie resource with the F0 pricing tier. Notice that there are no other options because we only have one resource that we created over in Azure. And you could always create a new one here, but I find just really knowing where all of my resources are coming from makes it clearer for me to understand. So that's why I highly recommend always starting in Azure, making sure that's super clear of what you're doing, and then heading over to the portal. Next, we need to figure out what our project type is. There are two options here. One is classification and one is object detection. We wanna do object detection. The difference is classification will classify an entire image and tell you what the entire image is representing. I specifically want to know if Bungie is within an image. So I don't want to have only images where it's only Bungie. I want Bungie to be in an image and have my custom vision resource be able to find where Bungie is within that image. So this AI will do two things. Number one, it'll identify if Bungie is in that image. And number two, where. It'll also give us a threshold or probability for if that is actually Bungie, but we'll get to that later. The next is what type of object we're looking for. In this case, I'm going to keep it general. You can see that we do have other options like logos or products on shelves, which could be useful if you are specifically trying to identify those types of things. And we also have general compact and general compact S1, which would be useful if we're doing something on a mobile app. Since this is just a test and we're going to be doing everything in a browser, I'm just going to choose general. Create project. And now we're taken to our project. The first thing that we need to do is upload images of Bungie to train our AI. You can see here on the left-hand side that we have two categories of images. One is tagged and one is untagged. Right now, we don't have any images, so nothing is there. I'm going to go ahead and add one image of Bungie first just to kind of show you the process, and then I'm going to add a bunch more. Okay, so I've chosen my image of Bungie that I want to add to start with. It's this image when Bungie is looking up into the sky, looking at the moon, and I'll click Upload File. Once this is done uploading, we can see that it gets put into our untagged category because we haven't tagged Bungie yet. If I click on this image in the untagged category, the custom vision service will provide me with a suggested area where an object might be found. I'm going to add a new tag to this object, which is Bungie, and I'm going to call the tag Bungie. Notice that you can adjust the size of this square. So if you were, for example, only trying to find Bungie's ears for some reason, you could really make it just Bungie's ears. I do want Bungie's whole body. Now, one thing to notice is that we don't want our square to be too tight because then we might be cutting off features that are identifiable but we also don't, don't want our square to be too big because then we're going to be including features that don't have anything to do with Bungie and really just have to do with the background. So this process might be iterative. The first time you do this, you might create bounding boxes for these tags that are a little bit too large or too small, and it takes a little bit of practice to figure out what makes the most sense for the object you're looking for. Once this is tagged, I can close this out and it shows up in my tagged area. We can see that I have one tag and there's one image for that tag. So let's talk a little bit about these images. If you're trying to follow along, the first thing that you're gonna need is, I don't know, maybe like 30, 50 images of the object that you're gonna want the AI to detect. 
we need at least 15 images per tag to be able to train our AI. These images can be at most six megabytes, but could also be smaller. When we're thinking about what types of images to choose, we want to really think about where this AI is going to be used in the wild. So for example, if I were tagging images of one of my pets, I've got four of them, let's say my dog Molly, who is a golden retriever, then I want to think about the situations where the camera might be identifying her. Molly is a golden retriever. She's got that gold coat. We also have a similarly colored floor in our living room. And so if I were trying to train an AI using images of Molly, I probably wouldn't want to use images of Molly only on grass because that difference between Molly and kind of that green grass in the background might be falsely training my, my AI to try to identify her against that green background. I would probably want to include some of those, but also some images where she is on my living room floor where it's that same color brown. Um, and then maybe also images where I've maybe cropped out the background. So it's just an image of Molly on like white background so that the AI can start to understand her true shape. I'm also going to want to have images of her laying down, standing up, running, jumping, where it looks like she's only got three legs um, with her face, just the back of her head, et cetera. So when you're choosing the images to upload and tag to train your AI, I highly recommend making sure that the images are accurately representing the object that you're trying to detect. So that's all angles, all lighting, different backgrounds, different sizes, images where the, the object is the entire image, image where the object is small within the image not only accurately representing the, the object, but also accurately representing where the object will be identified in the real world. We go over a lot more details of that in the Learn module, so I highly encourage you to read through that and learn more about it. So now I'm just gonna upload 14 more images and tag them with Bungie. So I'm gonna head over to the untagged area, click Add Images, and upload them all. Once you've uploaded and tagged all your images, you'll be able to see them over in the tagged area. And if you ever need to upload more images, you can always just head back over to the untagged area. Once we have at least 15 tagged images, we can click on these little cogs up here in the top right of our screen. Ooh, right here. And that is going to train our AI model for the first time. So let's go ahead and do that. I want to do a quick training because this is just a test that I'm trying out. But if you wanted to do an advanced training, you could do that. And now we basically just wait. Now, another thing I wanted to quickly mention about training your AI is that you don't want to include the exact same images that you're going to test your AI with. And that's why I recommend having, you know, 30 to 50 different images. So then that way you can train your AI on a certain set of images and then you can test it on other ones to see how accurate it is. All right, when your model is done training, it'll take you to this overview page for this iteration. We know that we're going to want to train our model with more and more data as we gather it. And so that's why it says iteration one, because we want to keep doing this over and over again. We can see three numbers here. One is our precision. We can hover over this I information tab here, and it'll tell us what precision or accuracy our model has if it identifies the object inside of an image, it's 100% accurate based on the images that I trained it with to identify that that is the correct tag. Now we only have one tag. And if you notice the images that I use to train it are all mostly of Bungie by herself. So I kind of would expect it to definitely know that the object in the image is Bungie because there's basically only one object and it can only be Bungie. Um, so that's not super surprising, but your images should be more complex and we'll do that in iteration two. The next one is recall and recall is when it should identify that an object is in, in, is in an image. It has a 33.3% accuracy of being able to identify that object. So that's not super great. We probably want to get that up. And the last one is MAP, which is the mean average precision. And it's basically across all of the tags, which we only have one right now. This is basically the object detector performance across all of them, which it's pretty high. But again, we only have one tag and it's pretty obvious what they are. 
So we've trained our AI model with essentially just images of Bungie. A lot of them were just different poses and lighting of Bungie on a white or gray background. And then there was the one that we did at the beginning where Bungie, it's from an image from her back where she's looking up at the sky. So I kind of want to just test to see how this model does. So I'm going to click on this check mark here at the top right of my screen to quickly test an image. So this is just testing how well our model could detect Bungie in an image. I'm going to choose one of my images, and I'm going to choose the one where she's just alone on a gray background. So we can see that the model detected potentially two objects. This one with a 29.3% confidence that this is Bungie, and then this one with a 40% confidence that it's Bungie. If I zoom out a little bit, we can actually see that there's other information over here. Um, this is our threshold, which basically says that I don't want to see anything where you're not at least 15% confident. Um, and then there are the two tags, um, which are the two bounding boxes that we see in this image. So 40% confidence that this is Bungie is not, still not super great, but I'm also curious how this does on an image of Bungie that's in the scene. So let's try that out. Again, kind of cheating a little bit. <laughs> it, nothing is really cheating because we're, we're training an AI here. Um, but again, we want to make sure that we're authentically and accurately representing the state of the world. This one is a picture of Bungie's face with kind of nothing else around it. Um, and we can see again that the AI detected potentially two objects, one with this bounding box and one with this one, where this one that does have Bungie's face is 60%, 62.6% accuracy or confidence. Um, and that's pretty darn good. AIs are not going to be 100% confident. Uh, even humans can't be 100% confident when they see things. So that's to be expected. But you do want it to be up in the like above 75%. So I think we need to train our model on more images. So I'm going to head over to the training images and I'm going to head into the untagged area and I'm going to upload more images. This time, however, I'm not going to just tag Bungie. I'm also going to tag objects in the image that are not Bungie. Now, it's not going to be useful for me to tag Bungie and then just tag like, you know, the spaceship and say, this is not Bungie. That's fairly obvious. One is has certain types of features like a face and limbs and ears, and the other one doesn't have those features. However, it might be useful to tag other types of objects that are kind of similar to Bungie, whether they be in shape or color or with the same types of features, because as the AI is learning what Bungie is, we could also help the AI learn what Bungie isn't to hopefully make the accuracy better. Remember though, we're going to need to have at least 15 images that have the not Bungie tag in them as well. So let's go ahead and do one to start, and then I'm going to upload the other 14. Okay, so I've uploaded this image that has Bungie and Feifei off on an adventure to collect materials for their rocket ship. We can see that the custom vision service is already helping us identify some bounding boxes that might be objects that we might care about. But like this wheel here, I don't really care about it. I'm It's pretty different from what Bungie looks like, and I really just want to identify Bungie. So first, I'm going to tag Bungie. Now this bounding box contains the yellow basket as well, which is not a part of Bungie. So I'm gonna make it a little smaller and tag Bungie. I also want to tag Feifei. Again, Feifei, though she definitely looks very different than Bungie from our human eyes, has some similar features like eyes, nose, some texture, um, things like that. So I want to make sure that our AI knows that this is not Bungie. Again, I'm gonna make it a little tighter on her face and I'm gonna add a tag, not Bungie. Now I have two objects, one is not Bungie and one is Bungie, and I'm gonna do that for 14 more images. This one is a really great example of an image that is helpful to tag as not Bungie. This is Jade Rabbit, and we know Jade Rabbit is not Bungie, but Jade Rabbit is also a rabbit. Bungie is a bunny. They have very, very similar features. So if you're building this along with me, but using images of your pet or favorite animal, I highly recommend finding animals or pets that are similar, but different to help your AI know the difference and be more accurate for your specific pet or animal. For example, I do have four animals, like I mentioned. One is Molly, who's my golden retriever. I also have Winston, who is a King Charles Cavalier Spaniel. 
sounds super fancy. He's a dog, but much smaller. And then I have two cats, Luke and Princess. So I would probably upload images with all four of my animals, specifying Molly and not Molly, but I might also upload other images of golden retrievers that have different features to make it clear that not every golden retriever is Molly, it's just this specific one. Another thing that you can see that I'm doing is I'm choosing images that have a lot of different lighting and backgrounds and in this case sizes of Bungie and using that to help our AI be more accurate with finding her. Remember when I said we probably wouldn't use the spaceship? In this part, we could because the spaceship does have some similar features to Bungie, like the ears and the eyes um, and the little cottontail. But once this outer layer comes off of the spaceship, it no longer resembles Bungie. So I wouldn't tag that one as not Bungie. But in this case, I will. This is another interesting one. There's this flower here in the front, and obviously that's not Bungie, but so far I haven't tagged anything else that's got like this just white roundish shape that Bungie has. So I do want to tag this one because it's in the foreground. It's much bigger in terms of number of pixels than Bungie is in this image, and it's white. And it has those kind of like petals that come out that maybe resemble ears. So I want to make sure that my AI understands that this flower is not Bungie. So I'm going to tag this one as not Bungie. So here's another interesting idea is the moon. Again, similar to the flower, the moon is this roundish shape that's kind of white and that's similar to Bungie. Now the moon doesn't have any other features and it's a perfect circle. So in this case, I'm not going to tag it as anything. I think it's different enough from Bungie that it's not going to confuse things. Here's another interesting one. Should we be tagging this bird or not? I think I'm going to. Again, it's got some of the same white featuring, but also some angled features like the ears. So I'm going to go ahead and say it's not Bungie. All right. So now I've got all of my images tagged. We can see that I have images tagged as Bungie and not Bungie, at least 15 of each. And I can go ahead and train again. Click train, quick training, and wait. All right, so we can see that it's not as accurate as before. And this makes sense because the images that we used, a lot of them had Bungie really small or in dark areas. And it was really hard to really identify Bungie even with my human eyes. So I would recommend that when you are building your own models and training them and testing them, that you make sure that you have a lot of images that have your pet or favorite animal from a lot of different angles so that it's easy to identify it. Let's go ahead and give this a test. We're gonna click on quick test again, and I'm gonna upload another image that we didn't use to train our model to see if we can accurately identify Bungie. So we're gonna pick this image of Bungie and Feifei when they finally identified how they're gonna to fly to the moon. And we can see that our model did identify an object, hopefully Bungie. We can hover over it and see that it thinks that it's Bungie with 78.3% accuracy. If you remember the first time we did this test, it was like just over 60% accuracy. So we are getting better with our accuracy with the added images. Let's go ahead and try one more and see how good it is. So this one is a much harder image because this has a ton of yellow and even Bungie's fur is kind of tinted yellow. So we can see that our model did identify this as Bungie, but with a really low confidence rate, 23.8%. And it did identify this as not Bungie, but again, a really low confidence rate, 16.3%. So we can see when we have images that affect the object within the image, like this lighting and kind of the blending of Bungie with the things around her, it makes it much harder for a computer to be able to identify an object within an image. But we can also compare this to iteration one when we had the initial 15 images. So let's go ahead and try that and see if there's any difference. So when we use the model from iteration one, we can see that the confidence for finding Bungie is a little bit lower, 22.7%, but also the bounding box of what is Bungie is much bigger, which in my opinion is much worse. I wanna know exactly where Bungie is, even if the confidence isn't super, super great. We can try that first image again too. So remember with this one, we did get a 78.3, I think, percent accuracy. And this time we're only getting a 29.5 percent accuracy when we run it using iteration one's model. So we can see that adding in those extra images did definitely help. 
Also, when we use iteration one's model, we didn't have that second not bungee tag. And it did think that Feifei with 56.5% accuracy was bungee. And that's much more than the 29.5% accuracy of actual bungee. So it seems like adding in those extra images was a really, really good idea. So let's quickly recap what we learned in this video. First of all, if this was exciting to you and you want to try it on your own, remember you can always head over to aka.ms slash learnwithdrg slash over the moon to take you to the Microsoft Learn modules where we have a lot more text and guidance for doing this on your own. But let's recap. Basically, we chose about 35 images. Around 15 of them we used to initially train our AI model on what Bungie looks like. Those initial 15 images I just personally chose to have them be mostly of just Bungie on a plain background. We tested that model with one image of Bungie in kind of a scene from the movie, and it wasn't super accurate. Then we uploaded another about 15 images that were mainly of Bungie within scenes of the movie, and we also tagged objects that might look similar to Bungie, but that weren't Bungie. When we tested our model on this iteration, we saw that the model was much more confident on identifying Bungie, the object, in an image. This was an example of using the Azure Custom Vision service with no code and all in the browser. Remember, if you create this service, there are quick starts for how to integrate this using APIs and the Custom Vision SDK into code. Also, don't forget that I do live streams every other week where you can not only follow along with what I'm doing, but also ask me live questions in chat and I can engage with you. So I highly recommend that you check out my next upcoming stream at aka.ms slash learnwithdrg slash upcoming stream. And if you enjoyed this type of content, I'm also part of the Microsoft Reactor team. And through the Reactors, we have a number of events and live streams and workshops that I highly encourage you to check out. So you can visit any one of these links here to check out more of the Microsoft Reactor content. And with that, this has concluded another episode of Learn with Dr. G, the special edition with the over the moon content. I can't wait to see you on one of my live streams or on Twitter, hashtag learn with Dr. G. Show me the AI model that you train with your favorite animal or pet. Tell me about your journey in learning to code or learning to use artificial intelligence in solutions that you're building and are excited about. Make sure to keep in touch and follow along for more videos. Bye everyone. Thank <laughs> you.